Listen, I want to welcome to the program uh, right now Mr. Charles Woods, who is the father of Tyrone Woods. Charles, thank you so much for your time. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for what the NRA is doing. I'd like to just say uh, over 20 years ago was the first time that I ever joined the NRA. And Ty was a hunter from a very early age. As you know, when he was five years old, he lived on a 9,000-acre cattle ranch in Long Creek, Oregon. And we'd give him a 22. he He'd be gone all day. And uh, hunting ground squirrels, we never worried about him. He made good decisions. Right. He'd always come back home. And uh, I, I definitely support what you guys are doing. Well, we so thank you for your help. Well, we appreciate that. And, you know, NRA members all across this country, uh, uh, we support the men and women of our military. We support our heroes and our warriors. Uh, and and, and we, we want them to be remembered. We don't want them to be forgotten. And I know that this is something very important to you um, because you are, let me, I don't want to put words in your mouth. What do you feel right now uh, about the, uh, the administration, the government's response to what happened in Benghazi and what you have been able to find out, the answers that the American people have been able to get about what happened to your son and the others who died that night? Well, the White House administration is going to great lengths to cover up the Benghazi betrayal. And what happens is they give us one story, and then the administration gives us another story, and we don't know which story, if any, to believe. I, I can't even imagine how frustrating that must be. To not even, to, 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 to know that somebody's not telling you the right story, first of all. And well, to not be able to get those answers. Well, I'm concerned about it for several reasons. Is one is that Ty loved this America. He loved this country. And that's why he served. And our country is based upon liberty. And in order for our country to be free, the voters need to have the truth, not lies, so that when they vote, they can vote intelligently based upon the truth. That's why the truth needs to come out. Do you think, um, uh, do you think we're making progress uh, in terms of the congressional investigation? Well, it's been a year and a half now, and there's been five committees, and they're made up of good people. Right. I've met most of them. But unfortunately, we really don't know much more than we did at the very beginning. So what we need to have right now is we need to have a select committee. And as you know, uh, Frank Wolf, about a year ago, introduced a resolution to form a special committee. And there's over 180 Republican members of the House of Representatives. That's over two-thirds of the Republicans have urged Speaker Boehner to do that. And there's only one person right now that's preventing that special committee from being formed, and that's Boehner. And John Boehner, he, I would plead with him, please form that select committee. If he gave the go-ahead and signed on to that committee and authorized it today, we could have that committee tomorrow, and we would have the answers. When you hear um, folks, uh, supporters of the administration, I, I think typically um, belittle the idea that, that there's anything to investigate uh, and, and, and you know belittle the idea that there are any uh, unanswered questions out there, what's your response to them? Well. Obviously, there's a major cover-up, and there's a reason why. And I don't think it's just the incompetence of Hillary Clinton. I don't think it's just the fact that the president didn't authorize military forces, which General Ham said were immediately available in the area, to go in and rescue, which always happens. The military, that's part of their DNA. You always rescue. That was not done in this case. I think it's bigger than that. I don't know, I'd have to speculate as what the other elephants in the room are, but there has to be more to it than just that. You know, um, we were supposed to have uh, Richard Minniter uh, on the program this afternoon. Uh, he has a new book called Eyes on Target, uh, which he says uh, uh, makes the claim that, uh, among other things, uh, at least three warnings that uh, the State Department ignored uh, about Benghazi. He says, based on extensive interviews with fighter pilots uh, and SEAL team assault leaders that would have been called upon for such an effort, uh, uh, Richard Minniter and his co-author uh, uh, talk about five uh, rescue plans of what could have, what should have been done uh, to save the American lives that were killed. He asked the question, if, uh, if, if political correctness is not standing in the way uh, of our missions and if political correctness has not even infiltrated 
uh, the, the, the orders that are given to our Navy SEALs? Well, unfortunately, there could have been a rescue. Any military person knows that. There was no attempt for at all for there to be a military rescue. And unfortunately, this is sending the wrong message to the terrorists. The message that's being sent is, number one, you can attack Americans. And while you are attacking them, we will do nothing to rescue them or to defend them. The second message that's being sent is that you can attack and kill Americans, but as terrorists, we will not come after you and we will not bring you to justice. It's been over a year, and can you name one terrorist that's been brought to justice as a result of this? The news media can go over and they can find the terrorists. They can even interview the mastermind at a cafe and have cameras on him. But for some reason, our government, which has the greatest intelligence community in the world, somehow or another, cannot find them. Charles, listen, I, I thank you so much, sir, for spending some time with us. I hope that you can you, you have an open invitation to come back anytime. Uh, you have anything to update us on, anytime you want to get the word out about something, just let us know. Well, thank you very much for what you're doing. The reason I'm here is because I do not want to see this being swept under the rug, and I appreciate what people like you are doing to well, make sure that doesn't happen. Thank you for everything you're doing from all of the NRA members who are watching. I know I, I speak for all of us when I say we are so sorry for the loss of your son. We admire his courage, and we are very grateful for his sacrifice on our behalf. Well, thank you, and Lord bless your work. Thank, thank you, you, sir.